Welcome to Topical Topology. Hello and welcome to another episode of Topical Topology. And uh, it's uh, well, hi Theo. How are you? Um, Good morning. How are you? It's a yeah. freezing, freezing it is uh, cold December today. morning. It's cold and it's sunny. Yeah, typical UK winter weather in some cases. Um, yeah, no, I know. I wish I brought my gloves with me when I left the house this morning. East from the east. Yes. And that wasn't just the au pair. Hmm? <laughs> that wasn't the au pair. No, no. It was the. Uh, anyway, I'm not going to even go down that road. So, well, one, actually, just before we started this podcast, um, Theo was spouting out a large amount of raw data into life expectancy and things like that. And, uh, you know, we were going to talk about Theresa May winning the No Confidence Bow, but you know what? I think it's all getting a little bit boring on that front now. Mm-hmm. Um, well, because although saying that, although saying that, I've really struggled in, access, in, in in reaching out to newer clients this month, more than more than any other month, and 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 the reason and one of the reasons why one Christmas has got something to do with that, but talking to other people who have got small businesses or micro businesses like myself, it's got a lot to do with the uncertainty over Brexit that people aren't actually committing to actually making those decisions, <coughs> and the biggest problem is. Now, when you're actually not making a decision, it's a decision of not making a decision. If that, if you know, if you can get through that cryptic, uh, cryptic statement, because the thing is, while other people, you know, and, and and it's like, you know, in a recession, companies will cut down on their training budget, when actually they should probably be increasing their training budget, and you know, you have to sometimes be able to flip the script and actually be able to take that risk, because otherwise, if other people start doing it and you're following what the market does. You're just going to be way behind the game. And when you're actually so far behind, it's so difficult to catch up. Which is what Warren Buffett does, doesn't he? He, he does the opposite. So he says, he says recessions are the opportunity to make money because that's when people are selling and he buys. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, but anyway, I want, to get, I want to get to this data that you've been sharing with me today before the podcast. Mm. So, um, and it's to do with about life expectancy. But um, well, what we'll, we'll, I think what we'll do, though, is we'll break it down and see how we can actually analyze that. Does that work for you today? Absolutely. Okay. As you know, as you know, people's life expectancy in the west has been steadily increasing, but it's plateauing. And for the last 10 years it's hardly increased at all uh, in Britain. And the situation is so bad that Britain is at risk of falling down the league tables in life expectancy. Now they say that some of the main reasons for this are diabetes particularly type 2 diabetes obesity uh, and and that and of course dementia uh, and also winter illnesses in other words people dying from the flu particularly old people which is why uh, they say that especially old vulnerable people need to have the flu jab otherwise they run the risk of getting very ill and dying so Dementia, obesity, and type 2 diabetes and wilter illnesses are said to be the main reasons for the plateauing of life expectancy. So obesity, diabetes, and flu. Uh, and dementia. And dementia. And, and in fact, dementia has doubled in the last 25 years. Yeah, and why is doubled. That uh, mainly because more people are living uh, to a uh, ripe old age. But the other reason is the other stresses that we put ourselves under. So any, any kind of inflammation in the body is going to run the risk of causing inflammation in the brain because dementia is, is simply where you have a genetic weakness to damage from inflammation. And it's genetic, is it, more than it is? There's a, um, a big genetic component. Okay. Um, but, of course, different people are susceptible to different illnesses. So wherever you have a weakness is where your chain is going to break. So you might have a weakness in your in your cardiovascular system so you'll get arteriosclerosis uh, you could have a weakness in terms of your anti-cancer uh, mechanism in which case you're going to get cancer you could have a weakness uh, in in your neurotransmitters in the brain in which case you're going to get depression or anxiety do you know, do you know what's really interesting though the lifestyle I, did you know that 40 percent of americans don't do any muscle strengthening exercise and and one third of men and uh, no no up up to 70 percent of men and 50% of women are overweight. Am I 70% of men and 50% of women? Up to, yep. Yeah, but do, do you know what? What's, what's actually interesting statistic on that one is that they do it like on this BNI count between height and 
you know, but it looked to do with your height and your weight, and they actually make that comparison. So there's the people who, there's, well, we've talked about this in the past, when there's people who are physically fit who will probably be considered overweight, and in some cases even obese, if, um, if, if they're carrying more muscle than is the, is the average in the marketplace. So, but that's that, a range. You see, that's, that's a range. And so on the whole, it will catch the fat people and the, and, yeah, and the thin the, ones. And, and the thing is, look, I, I, I've been to America, and one of the things I, I remember seeing when I was younger, actually when I used to take my daughter, uh, when she was younger rather, I was actually going around Disney World, and, and the amount of obesity there was, in, was incredible. But not only that, you'd actually have whole families hiring these... Um, these little sort of you know motorized wheelchairs or whatever and getting around and if you think actually if they actually did walk around a little bit more the chances are is that they probably wouldn't be as a, they probably wouldn't be as a beast but they literally get in their wheelchair and they go from and they go from I suppose from ride or, or activity to another activity without doing anything and the amount of stuff that they put in the food over there I mean look I, you know, I, I enjoy the. I, I, you know, I have enjoyed going to America and eating their crap, but it is a lot of it is crap, you know. But you see, it's not their fault because people are who they are, and uh, and at the end of the day, every single person is self-serving. Every single person is more likely to react emotionally and seek dopamine hits, and essentially, mankind is is serving as laboratory rats for the large corporations. For instance, one of the reasons of our, of our for our obesity epidemic is the fact that the large companies found that they couldn't make money by by uh, freezing and thawing fresh food because it simply would spoil but they did work out that processed food can be freezed and thawed and of course that's stuffed full of sugar uh, so so the idea that breakfast is the most important meal of the day and Kellogg's cornflakes that's all packed with sugar which is going to destroy your body and, and predispose you to dementia. Well, you said something the other day, actually, when we were walking up the road and it was about bread. And you say, actually, bread's not that bad for you sometimes because they put a lot of vitamins in it. But it's, it's, it's actually because, of, because it's made of grain. Grain is incredibly bad for you. And, and indeed, I forget the name of the, uh, the doctor who wrote a book on it, but he coined the term grain brain. Um, and it's, it's actually worse for your glycemic index than pure sugar. Well, there you go. I mean, the, 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 I, best, the best bread to eat, by the way, is spelt, because that doesn't have grain in it, apparently. So what does it have in it, just, to, just for our audience? No idea, but it doesn't have grain, and it's, it's slightly more compact and thick. And it also needs to be... It, it needs to, it, you need a very careful cooking environment, apparently, as well, so, not, so as not to contaminate it. Wow. So, okay. So, and the, th but the thing is, look, it, 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 isn't it fascinating, though, that at one time the biggest, one of the biggest problems we had was starvation, and now it's gone the other direction to obesity. And, um, and, and again, I think this has got a lot to do with how... Cap well, I suppose capitalism, and I'm fine. I think everyone's decided, everyone's entitled to make their choices and what they put in their mouth. Hold on a second. Everyone's entitled to make that choice. Um, so, you know, you've got to take accountability but to what can't. you put in your mouth. As I keep saying, the, 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 the average population are incapable of making rational, consistent choices, or even rationally consistent choices, because they think emotionally. They have system one thinking rather than logical thinking. And, that, and, that, and therefore, that's why religion refers to people as children. They need guidance. And indeed, this is slowly being reflected in legislation. So, for instance, there's a sugar tax because, because they found that price affects how people use things. So one of the main determinants on, on uh, smoking is the more expensive they make the cigarettes, then the less people smoke. It really is as simple as that. So the more expensive they make drinks... And that's why a lot more drinks. people are smoking roll-ups now, because... Um, well, not because I, I, I see it all. It. The I see it all the time now. Um, you know, a pack of cigarettes is over ten pounds. And, and I remember when I was any dopamine hits. Any dopamine hits. So, for instance, they, they even the internet and social media, which gives you un, unlimited dopamine hits, is bad for you. It's been shown time and again to cause depression and anxiety. And did you know that children, if they spend more than seven hours a day on the tablet? actually change the structure of their brain their cortex their cerebral cortex gets thinner imagine that 
he actually if gets more, more t- if they spend more than seven hours a day on tablets in other words using the phone using iPads it reduces oh, on a their tablet, I- on a, okay on a yeah. computer tablet as opposed to taking pills exactly that's, okay. exactly let's just clarify that one because it I was getting a bit confused changes their way of thinking and reduces their intelligence because if you don't use it you lose it so we're probably devolving as a species as, rather than evolving then that's right yeah because well, because I mean the thing is look I mean we, we talked about depression increasing we've talked about so many more ailments coming to the market and, it's a lot, and I said we've talked about this before it's a marketing tool particularly you know the only people who benefit from this are the pharmaceutical companies um, and all that someone has to do is believe and, it's, and it comes down to perception that um, if they believe that there's something wrong with them or they've le- been led to believe that something's wrong with them they will actually resort to a pharmaceutical product to actually relieve relieve them of, of that ailment but however with, with a lot of these things they do have side effects um, Not and because and, and, and I watched um, I think it was uh, I think I'm probably on so, one of the social media platforms where there was this person who'd worked for a pharmaceutical industry and he said actually who, who'd left uh, she, she must you know a moral compass must have changed and she turned around and said actually pharmaceuticals are in the business of creating disease as opposed to solutions because we want people to keep on buying. Well, just like arms manufacturers are in the business of creating war. Absolutely, and they'll spend, and they'll and they'll you know bat people against each other to be able to do so. Um, so, so uh, it's it's an interesting one. And and the thing is, it, uh, and we've talked about it again in the past about political correctness and all these things about creating these safe spaces, which are you know. And I've, and I've brought it up. I brought this up in the last three or four weeks several times because I've got a real bee in my bonnet about it. And having, I don't know if anyone's been watching the BBC series called Dynasties about the animal kingdom, and uh, you know, and they talked about the lions and how and how they and how they operate. And they talked about these. Did you watch it? And the chimpanzees. I haven't. They talked about the chimpanzees and things and how they're fighting for hierarchy, position of hierarchy. At the end of the day, when you actually look at all these and they actually have their young and things like this, a job of a parent in the wild is to be able to actually teach their young how to survive, to become stronger, to become fitter, and to be able to actually deal with the challenges of a lot of, of, of their life around them. And we are no different. But so many, when we actually start putting those, those areas in place where people are learning to be a lot less self-reliant... We are actually taking away their power to be able to actually do something to, to, to be more resourceful. And, um, you know, and, and this is why I actually have such a problem when, you know, you rely on the state to actually solve your problem for you. Guess what happens? You stop, stop, you stop thinking on how to resolve your issue. And the thing is, do you become a better human being because of that or do you become a worse human being because of that? See, everything is based on self-interest, self-serving. So politicians, the reason why we're in such a terrible state with politics is because they, they, they're all self-serving. They want to get elected. I mean, look at, look at Rhys Mogg and Johnson and, and, um, and the other chap who's... Who? Rees Mogg and uh, Jacob Rees Mogg, yes, and uh, Boris Johnson, and who's the gentleman who's Home Secretary right now? Uh, uh, Philip Hammond, isn't it? Um, Not Home Secretary, oh, no, he's Chancellor. God, who is Home Secretary? That, the guy who's follicularly challenged, I can't, I can't remember. Well, anyway, Michael Gove, the, is, no, 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 Michael no Go- oh my the, God. The key thing is, the key thing is, of course, you don't cause a leadership challenge right now when what you need is leadership. I mean, it's it, it is complete. It's self-serving. It's it is. It shows lack of respect, lack of structure, lack of respect for hierarchy, and that's the problem with society at the moment. Yeah, but about yeah, but do you know do you know what that that was that was also comes down to a lot of frustration from a lot of people who weren't happy with what Theresa May went and you know went and did with Brexit it didn't it didn't deliver and you know a lot of this sometimes is also also smoke and mirrors that we're not really aware of because the thing is it's almost as though she went in there accepted the accepted the deal even though she knew it was bad knowing it wouldn't get through parliament um, almost you know forcing the leadership challenge probably knew she was already going to get back in and uh, or, or that she was going to be fine, and then she has to go back and renegotiate with Europe because they don't actually want a uh, 
they, they, don't, they don't want to know Brexit deal any more than we do. But the difficulty is that, as we said, the, the, what people don't understand is that uh, Barnier and people like that are bureaucrats. They're unelected bureaucrats, and they're the people actually making European law. Um, and I've, I've actually watched...